And this is where Web3 infrastructure comes in. What it does is transform the services that we use from platforms controlled by companies to protocols that are open source and controlled by users. Hi, I'm Amy James, and welcome back to What Kind of Internet Do You Want? Today we're talking about my all-time favorite Web3 topic. I know when most people think about crypto, they think about the financial services like Bitcoin, NFTs, and ICOs, and that's understandable because it's where the most money has been made so far, people have made and lost fortunes at rapid speed, sometimes in a matter of hours. But there is a whole other aspect to crypto that will impact our daily lives more than financial services. It will change how we communicate and access information. And that's Web3 infrastructure. It's an era defining technological revolution that's transforming communication and access to information as much as previous era defining technologies like the printing press, telephone, and broadcast. I like to think of Web3 infrastructure like the plumbing of the web, just as we rely on water flowing from the tap, we rely on infrastructure services like file storage, cloud processing and hosting, video transcoding, API queries, logging, and content indexing for the platforms that we use every day, like Dropbox and Google Drive, Twitch, Instagram, YouTube, and Zoom, and the websites and apps that are hosted on Amazon Web Services and Cloudflare. Generally, we take these kinds of services for granted, just like we don't think about our plumbing. We don't think about the infrastructure that is delivering this video. It's just there, doing its thing in the background. <laughs> that is until something goes horribly wrong, and the infrastructure has broken down so much that you have to completely replace it. If you've ever had old copper pipes or electrical wire that forced you to completely renovate the plumbing or electricity in your house, you know what I mean. These kinds of failures can't be fixed with a simple repair. You need new infrastructure. And that's where we find ourselves with the infrastructure of the web today. The problems with web two are becoming more serious and more obvious year after year. There are issues with security, like the billions of personal records that have been exposed from attacks on Equifax, Google, Facebook, LinkedIn, Amazon, Apple, Netflix, and other centralized networks. We have issues with privacy because centralized networks control our personal data and track what we do online. And the surveillance capitalism is driven by the business model that powers Web2. It's almost completely dependent on advertising, but it's so riddled with issues like bots and click fraud that some analysts compare the current state of digital advertising to the subprime mortgage environment just before the 2008 crash. Plus, it's gotten to the point where it feels like you can't trust anything online anymore, from algorithms that are intended to manipulate our emotions to deep fakes and fake news. It's becoming impossible to know what information is reliable. It's gotten so bad that some argue it's even putting our personal freedoms, economy, even our republic in jeopardy. Web 2 centralized design is also incredibly inefficient. For all the talk about whether or not Bitcoin is efficient, there is shockingly little awareness about the inefficiency of Web 2's infrastructure. Think about Apple Music and Spotify, for example. They have, what, 90% of the same content, but they don't share any resources. They each have their own hub and spoke networks. Because each centralized network is siloed, there is just a tremendous amount of excessive redundancy and waste in the system. Web2 infrastructure uses resources so inefficiently that it costs much more than it needs to. It's common for software companies to spend almost half of their revenue on infrastructure services, which is insane. That means that for every $10 a user spends on an app, a cloud provider like Amazon Web Services gets about $5. But while all of this sounds like a lot of bad news, it's really just par for the course for these kinds of era-defining technological revolutions. I don't want to bash Web2 too much. It was an important step in the evolution of the web. It onboarded a five billion people and it proved the market. It's just also become controlled by a handful of companies, Apple, Alphabet, Amazon, Meta, and Netflix. 
And this is where Web3 infrastructure comes in. What it does is transform the services that we use from platforms controlled by companies to protocols that are open source and controlled by users. The history of technology has a pattern of siloed platforms proving user demand and then being supplanted by open source protocols. IBM established and dominated the personal computer market until competitors figured out how to make computers compatible with its operating system and peripherals, essentially defining a new protocol. The PC clone was then built by many companies, quickly dwarfed IBM's market share and remains the most widely used computers to this day. Likewise, at the beginning of the public internet, users accessed it via providers like AOL, Prodigy, and CompuServe, which each had their own proprietary services. So just as today, Hulu users can't access the same content as Netflix users, back then AOL users weren't able to access the same content as Prodigy users. The World Wide Web was supposed to connect people and ideas across the globe, but because the behind the scenes services have become centralized during the Web2 era, it's not been able to fulfill its potential yet. Web3 protocolizes the infrastructure services of the web. It's as revolutionary as the printing press, the telephone, and broadcast because it makes these communication and information channels open and accessible to everyone, providing a free and fair marketplace for communication and ideas. So let's look at some of the protocols that are decentralizing the infrastructure of the web. File storage protocols like Arweave, Saya, Storage, and Filecoin offer different approaches for how to store information and content online. Arweave offers permanent storage. You pay once and the content is stored forever, building a kind of decentralized library of Alexandria that's immune from the destruction the original suffered. Saya, Storage, and Filecoin offer a service that's more like Dropbox in that you need to keep paying for it for your file to stay online. LivePeer is a decentralized video streaming network. It offers services for applications that need transcoding and video processing for things like live streaming, video on demand, and video conferencing. The Graph provides tools that developers need to build all kinds of applications. It's an indexing protocol for querying networks like Ethereum, Arweave, and IPFS. It allows anyone to build and publish open APIs, making data easily accessible. Pocket also offers developer tools, but theirs are for connecting to RPC endpoints across many networks of blockchain nodes. It's kind of like decentralized cloud hosting for blockchain calls. And a cache is like a decentralized Amazon Web Services. It's a marketplace that connects users to cloud capacity in data centers, enabling anyone to buy and sell cloud computing. And the savings they offer developers is significant. A cache can offer them cloud computing at up to three times less than the cost of centralized providers like Amazon Web Services, Google Cloud, and Microsoft Azure. You can track the use of all of these protocols at web3index.org. These infrastructure protocols provide the tools and capabilities that developers need to build fully decentralized applications, offering users options that use resources more efficiently, provide better performance, and are less expensive. Centuries from now, when people look back at era-defining technologies like the printing press, telephone, broadcast, and the web, the web we use today, Web2, will barely be a footnote. They will be referencing the decentralized technology of Web3 because it allowed the web to reach its full potential. And that's it for today. If you found this video valuable, please hit the like button, subscribe, and share it out. You can follow me at Amy of Alexandria and the organization at Web3WG. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.